Welcome along to Hot FC. We're down to 16 teams at the World Cup, of course. The round of 16 is upon us. We do not have games today, but we do have a lot to lay. And yours sincerely, you've been doing a bit to run you through all the proceedings as everything happening out there in Russia. So how about say we start off by going through uh, the pleasantries, fresh stuff. Michael, it's good to have you back on the show. Always a shake on it. Yeah. As well. Fantastic round of games we saw, especially on um, on Thursday, where Senegal, the last touch bearer for Africa, got knocked out of the World Cup. Yeah. Albeit via the, the cruel means of fair play. How did you rate all of that? And I think um, I, I heard a lot of people uh, say something about it. It's, it's actually really difficult to uh, accept the fact that you come to the World Cup, play the long qualifying series, lots of right. games, you come to the World Cup and then you get eliminated just by a yellow card or, or yeah. two. But at the end of the day, these are the rules that were set before the competition started from mm-hmm. So there's nothing anybody can do about that. But then again, Senegal being eliminated again proves how how well or how badly African teams manage games. Because there was a clip out, or there's a clip out now, um, the goal that um, Colombia actually scored. Yeah. A, Senegalese, a Senegalese player that was actually by the uh, goal post that saved that ball. But he was very nonchalant about it. He was actually posing by the goal post, you know. So that's 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 how far or how uh, we can how or how, how far we can go as regards not you know being fully concentrated on the game. Yeah. But I thought it was unfortunate. All African teams going out of the uh, going out at the group stage, not qualifying to the next round. I think this is the first time since the quota got released to five African teams. Yeah. This is the first time no African team is moving to the next pass, stage. Yeah. And I also thought this should have been the World Cup where African teams do really well. Yeah. Because it, it, the gap got really close this time around. We could have played against anybody and, and we could have really put up a good so performance. So what does it say about the overall representation of, of our team on the continent? Because normally you're used to having teams like Ghana, mm. you know, Cameroon, Nigeria, yeah. the, the powerhouses of African football. Mm. Does this now paint a bad light on the teams that qualified in place of those teams? Egypt, Morocco, the Tunisia, who have not been there for a while, and Egypt as well. I don't think he. I don't think he paints. Um, he, I don't think he puts the guys who are who have gone to the World Cup or who were just eliminated in the right. bad light. I, I just feel like he puts the entire continent, you know, in a bad light because now we're talking about Africa, uh, the continent having nine slots to, by 2026. That means we'll probably we're playing more games or just a game or two. More and if we can play three and get three to the next round, what's guaranteed that if we have nine, then we can do what it, what is needed to be done. What we need to do is really get because we've got players playing in Europe. So why is it that when we come to national competitions, these European teams get these little things more than we do? Because our players play in Europe, we should be able to bring them into our teams as well. Yeah. Understand it. And speaking of um, uh, players who play or play that trade in Europe, I don't think it's even. Um, we've got to look at teams like Iran. Right, and what they've been able to do at the World Cup so far. You look at teams like, I'm going to talk about Japan shortly, you know, and, and South Korea. You know, not the biggest players. And what I've noticed at the World Cup this year is it's all about if you're ready to do it, to put in the work and, and fight and, and be focused for, for 90 plus plus one minutes and, and whatever. I, I, I like the fact that you mentioned uh, Iran. They, they, they didn't have players who are, who are playing in Europe or uh, they didn't have so many players playing in Europe. Yeah. But they had a coach who has done so well in Europe, you know, uh, and, and that showed in their gameplay how they manage games, how they play games, and you know how they segment games. So it's either you have players who understand these things, and even if you have players who understand these things, you still need the manager to have a basic to to be the to be the driver. Yeah. Because you get players go onto the pitch and they want to do what the manager wants. Except you are they you are part of the Argentine side who yeah. took matters into their own hands, but. You know, you, players would want to go there and go in the direction the coach has uh, laid down for them. So you want a coach who know how to read these things and who understand these games at their the highest level. So we uh, obviously have talked about how Senegal have uh, got knocked out of the tournament. And um, Japan obviously qualifying in place of Senegal by the virtue of having lesser yellow cards than Senegal. So that's no African teams in the round of 16. So let's start off with the first Round of 16 fixture on Saturday, that's France taking on Argentina. A, a bit of a nostalgia about this one, a bit of um, a sense of we could have been the ones easily yeah. uh, playing France at the World Cup, but Argentina-France, how big a clash is it 
We talk about the biggest teams in the world when they get to the business end of the season. That's where they really turn the style. Could Argentina put everything that's happened in the group stage away and totally be a team reborn? I mean, two, two footballing uh, heavyweights obviously is a huge clash. And yes, Argentina could actually be that same because group, the group stages might be a difficult thing. Getting past the group stage might actually spark something in itself. Yeah. Because they got it right against Nigeria. So going forward, there might be something that they that would work for them going forward. And you also need to consider the fact that Argentina have got history on their side. They, I mean, they've met twice at the World Cup. Argentina have won both of them. So uh, they, generally, they've met 10 times. Argentina won six. Yeah. And France has won just once. Yeah. You know, so it, it looks as though over the years, Argentina have always gotten the better of France. But this time around, with everything going on, going on around Argentina, maybe this is when it changes. Maybe this is when France will do one over them. But yeah. you never know, it's football. And even France themselves have not really inspired confidence with all of the talent they have. Yeah. You know, you expect them to attack. They're, they're kind of similar, uh, sorry, Coach they're, mm. they're kind of similar to Argentina in the sense of the talent pool. Mm. So many top class players not quite finding the best way to play together as a team. And obviously, France have found a way to do it better than Argentina have. But you get the sense it usually relies or boils down to one moment of brilliance from one person rather than a, than a team effort. As, as, as far as talent goes, I think France has, France are even a better place than Argentina. Right. Argentina have got players who are reaching the twilight of their careers. France have got players who are actually reaching their peak or who are actually very promising. Yeah. Right. So I think they are in a better place as regards talent. But yes, they, they both struggle as regards putting these talents together and making it work on the pitch. And for France most especially, you expect them to attack with all forms of flair and without any form of obstacle in front of, in front of them. But they haven't done that. They struggled through, they, they, they drew against Denmark. Yeah. Against Argentina, it looks as though they should be able to get one. You saw the way Nigeria played against Argentina as well. I don't think there's anything to fear about this Argentine side now. So far, at the World Cup, Messi has been subdued, except for the game he played against Nigeria. Yeah. He, he didn't even really perform against Nigeria, except yeah. for the goal he scored. So, France know that we have a way we can subdue at Messi, then Argentina is uh, they, they, they are done. Yeah, we'll see what happens with the France-Argentina game, but I'm just going to take your prediction on that game. Uh, what do you think will be the scoreline? Uh, I think France. I think France. 3-1. Argentina is a huge scoreline for a round of 16 game. Hmm? It's a huge scoreline. It is, but um, I mean, for all the... Because the Argentines... Just, just, just need to predict. Absolutely. The Argentines can't defend. Even against Nigeria, they should have considered 3. Right. 3-1. Yeah, France uh, in favor. 